Oh my goodness, we're here with Shawnee. We're live, we're live with Shawnee. Shawnee Taylor, she's a creator. She helps people do <laughs> copywriting every day. Shawnee Taylor, <laughs> she'll help you write your content. Shawnee Taylor, she'll share steps with you to do that. <laughs> Shawnee Taylor, attract your perfect clients. Okay, welcome. If you're on here, go ahead and drop a hashtag live or a hashtag, you know, something. I think we're live. It looks like we are. All right, excellent. So that's dope. And if you're here, hashtag live, hashtag Shani. Shani is a professional copywriter and content creator. She helps business owners connect with an ever greater number of people in their market and increase their business growth with compelling copy. Oh my goodness. And she's on here today. I'm so excited. And she's going to be sharing that number one thing that everyone can do to write content that captures your target audience attention and then converts them into clients so that you can serve them powerfully. Oh my goodness shawnee i am so absolutely freaking excited i'm gonna open okay also side note she is also a juris doctor in law from australia's number one university which makes you a lawyer is that correct that is correct but i so, don't practice she doesn't practice okay got it but she can create those compelling convincing arguments so i'm so excited about this and shawnee i'm gonna open the floor to you and i invite you to just share a little bit about your journey, how you went from, I guess, initially going to become a lawyer and then moving into becoming a copywriter and content creator for businesses. Sure. So, um, I mean, where do you start? Um, you know, I have been writing in a professional sense in some capacity for the last 18 years. Um, and then obviously decided that I would become a lawyer and about halfway through my post-grad law degree decided that I wasn't going to become a lawyer um, but still continued on with the degree obviously because, you know, having a law degree is, is hugely beneficial in any sense. Um, but that really, you know, added to the toolkit in terms of being able to work out how to form, formulate really powerful arguments um, and deliver them not necessarily in a way that comes across as argumentative, but, you know, it's just about that evidence gathering and the fact finding and speaking to people in what is valuable to them so that they listen to what you've got to say. Um, and then, you know, from a professional capacity and a full-time capacity, I've been writing now for the last five years. So um, I guess that's a really brief overview. Um, I don't know, yeah, where, where to go from that. Yeah, that's a super brief overview. <laughs> let, me, uh, let me ask you this. What was the impetus to transition to the full-time writer? So initially it was that while I was, so I was studying a full-time post-grad law degree and I was a single mum and I obviously had to work. So I actually started freelance contracting and was so was doing the full time law degree, being a mum and also as a contractor or a freelancer, I was taking on 50 hours of work a week. So, wow. um, yeah, so when I finished my law degree, uh, it made sense to continue doing what I was doing because I actually... I mean, I've, you know, in terms of from a personal perspective, I mean, I was a writer as a child. I had books and books of poems that I'd written, you know, before computers existed. So we'd handwrite everything out. And, uh, you know, writing was always the go to to express myself because um, for people who know me, uh, they will know that this is true. And for people who maybe don't know me as well and only know sort of an external, superficial, um, side of me it would appear on the surface that maybe I'm a bit of an extrovert but I'm actually an introvert and I get my energy from being alone and I, I'm a deep thinker and I process things and writing was always a way for me to be able to express myself and process in a really meaningful way rather than using um, you know rather than than using verbal words 
jobs, um, you know, consistently just for the sake of talking. That's generally not what I do. Um, but I'm an introvert with, I guess, a bit of a personality. So sometimes it could be taken that I am an extrovert, but actually, you know, writing has always been that introverted part of me. So I was always a writer. It was something that I always wanted to do, but I hadn't given myself permission to do it full time. And I think as well, because we think that if you go into an arts type of role, creativity, creativity, creative, I can't get it out. A, a creative role. A, a creative, creative role. Occupation. Exactly. Um, there tends to be this idea that you won't make money off it, whether it's writing or, you know, painting or whatever. So it took a long time for me to give myself permission to do it to do what I love and to give myself permission to make money out of it, really. Mm. That That's resonates. so powerful. Yeah. I mean, it, yeah, it does. I mean, yeah, I mean, I think that it's just there's that whole stigma that, like, you know, starving artist. And, it, and the truth is, especially moving, you know, now with all computers and the Internet, it's even it's easier than ever to make money as an artist you know as someone who does something creative so and then giving yourself permission like i guess having enough self-awareness to know maybe that's this is like in hindsight yeah um but you know give, having the awareness to know that you gave yourself that permission and that's when okay so let's just say theoretically there was like a moment in time you gave yourself permission and then what happened? Well, in hindsight, again, which is always a really beautiful thing, but I had already been writing full time for five years. Like, and you know, I, so I did my undergrad and I did my postgrad and I was writing full time while I was studying. So when I look back now, I was already feeling my highest value of writing. I was already doing it every day, but I hadn't connected and given myself permission to focus on that. So I'm off doing these 50 hours a week as a freelancer while I'm studying post-grad law, thinking that I had to become a lawyer. So I was already doing the thing, but hadn't allowed myself to accept the thing, if that makes sense. Totally, yeah. And so it was, it was you know, really finishing the law degree and knowing that I was not going to you know, pursue that as a full-time thing because I knew that that would make me unhappy. So it, I just, you know, it made sense to continue doing what I was doing, but this time to um, move into doing something and writing about what was meaningful to me rather than being dictated, you know, by what was just there and available as a freelancer. Mm. Got it. And then you just, and then you just kept, kept going. Well, I, I want to actually, I really want to acknowledge some amazing mentors along the way because I think that that's really, really important. So, you know, we, we I've said that I gave myself permission, but that's a journey that you experience with other people along the way. And I think it's so, so important to be consistently seeking out mentors and, you know, education in any form from people who are already doing things that you want to do or they're in a place where you want to be because, you know, we can't get there on our own, whatever that thing is. And, well, we can, but it's probably going to take a lot longer. It's going to cost us a lot more money um, to get there. So I think, you know, I've got to acknowledge I've had some amazing mentors throughout my life, but um, particularly in the last few years, uh, and that makes such a huge difference. Mm. Yes, 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 yes. So much yes. I agree 100%. Because all of my, any time that I feel like I move forward in my business or in my life or just I move forward at all, it always comes from having a mentor, seeking out education, learning about something new or something old, um, but just learning, you know, and then having a guide, a coach, a mentor, a consultant, and, yeah, taking that on. So I agree 100%. Yeah, and, but, and then I think the next step to that, though, that's really important to acknowledge is that you learn, but unless you then implement, it just sits in your head. 
So I think that it's so important to realise that it's not just about knowledge gathering. Like there's only so many courses you can do. There's only so many books you can read unless you start to practically implement these things as well and take that action, then you know, you, you know, we're not, we, you know, we can't, we're not Tibetan monks. We can't sit on top of a mountain in meditation all day with this wealth of knowledge and not do anything with it. Like we have to practically apply it. So true. <laughs> You're right. That's the second, that's the piece that no one thinks about. Exactly. It's that action, the action piece. Yeah. Uh, so we are on here. If you're live, we're on here with Shani Taylor. That's S H A N I space Taylor, T A Y L O R. And if you want to connect with her, cause she's absolutely a fantastic human being and she is a coach and a consultant. And if you want to connect with her, you can find her on Facebook at the, at uh, Shawnee Taylor. And I just spelled it out and it'll, I'll put it in the comments afterwards as well. You can, you can find her. So Shawnee, now that you've taken the action, you're doing it. You've been doing it for five years. I want, I'm going to, we're going to skip forward a little bit. What exactly do you do and who do you help? I do nothing and I help no one. <laughs> yes. Uh, that's I read that's books called, and then, and that's called hashtag even... freedom. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. So what I do essentially is a done for you service from a copywriting perspective. So I um, predominantly work with established um, entrepreneurs, coaches, consultants, business owners who are ready to take their business to the next level. So the reason normally that people will engage my services, um, they're either they're wise enough to know that their time is best spent on their highest profit producing tasks. And normally sitting down and writing copy is not one of them. So they want to delegate to an expert um, and, you know, the other reason being that they want to connect with their market, a wider portion of their market on a deeper level. And, um, you know, I've, I've heard some stuff. Um, people either tend to value copywriting or they don't. People tend to either think that, you know, it's just some words on a page and I can, you know, make a post on social media or send an email out and don't realise the science behind it, but there is an entire psychology around how we, we have to know how to capture our market for them to read what we've got to say or to listen to our video. So, um, you know, professionals come to me because they realise that and they want to connect with their market and they also want to spend their time building their wealth by doing their highest profit-producing tasks and copy isn't one of them. And then the other thing that I do as well is coaching on copywriting. So at the moment, I'm working one-on-one -on -one with people. There will be a course that will come out um, this year, but at the moment, it's it's one-to-one -one coaching. Ooh, that was my, ooh, teasers. Teasers, yeah. Okay, awesome. <laughs> so you kind, of, you kind of touched on this. Uh, I just want to emphasize it. So why is it so important? that people pay attention to copywriting and consult an expert or develop their own skills in, in this? So I love that question. Um, so I'll start with a really famous quote. Zig Ziglar said that when we help others get what they want, we get what we want. And the most effective way to be able to help others get what they want is first of all being able to connect with them and sell them your service so there seems to be sales often seems to be a bit of a dirty word people get really uncomfortable around selling themselves selling their service um, but in order to be able to serve people you have to be able to sell to them first and it is simply just a transfer of energy when we're looking to engage with somebody because we're looking to help them solve their problem, which gets them what they want. And equally, it gets us what we want because, you know, we're on a mission to serve people with whatever that thing is that we do, whether it's coaching, copywriting, you know, getting people to have fun in their business, um, you know, hairdressers, accountants, the whole thing, right? So mm -hmm. it's, it's a partnership but we have to be able to sell to them. 
copywriting is the vehicle of how we make that connection with people. So it is so important because we have to know how to, particularly in a content heavy environment these days, we have to know how to capture attention quickly, meaningfully and concisely to start the partnership. Mm. Gotcha. So you need, so the number, the first thing, the number one thing that everyone needs to do is to learn how to capture their target clients attention correct or capture their capture them in that one second so yeah. what is like what is the number one thing that people can do to actually do that like in practice so um to answer this i might take the approach of what i see people do a lot and then contrast it to that. So again, it will always, in terms of the structure of, of your copy, whether it's in a video or if it's in written form, depending on the medium, it could be social media, it could be um, your website. So this, the psychology behind how you structure your message will always be different. So I'm going to talk about this at a really high level, um, just so that it's more digestible. But the thing that people often do is they write or they create a piece of content or copy based on them and there's a lot there's lots of me and i in what they're speaking about but to capture the attention of who you want to serve the number one thing that you need to be able to do is apply empathy so whenever i sit down mm. to create something it's almost like taking on a persona putting on a mask of who I'm speaking to and, you know, it's like putting on their skin. Now, that's a really feely type of way to explain it, but, you know, there is a, um, a science that you can use, so to speak, that can make it easier for you around how you create empathy. Um, so because people obviously want to work with people who they know, like and trust, and we know, like and trust people who speak our language. It's, you know, it's the quickest way to do it. The way to speak their language mm -hmm. is to apply empathy. So um, there's two things people can do that I recommend. The first thing is start a keyword list. So for me, I have keyword lists of the types of people that I'm work as a copywriter. I'm always um, documenting the words that my clients tend to use a lot, but then mm -hmm. I'm also documenting their ideal clients' words. So for people who might be listening today, you're not probably a copywriter, but so what you would want to be doing is documenting every time you're speaking with your audience or you're seeing things in your newsfeed or on their websites, documenting the key words that keep popping out and then use those in your copy. The second thing um, is I've got an empathy map um, on my Facebook wall, so head over. Um, a little plug. Go well, over there. <laughs> but essentially, okay. empathy is a mix of a, psycho a psychological state, a cognitive state, and a, a physical state. So if you're sitting down to create something and you want to apply empathy to your ideal target market, what you're looking for is their psycholo the psychological state, so their wants and their desires, the cognitive, so perhaps their education or their language, and, you know, the physical, where, where, what are their habits? What are their environmental factors? So start to document all of those out and then you start to, that helps you to take on their persona and create your copy from their perspective. Mm, that is so powerful. So the bigger picture is apply empathy okay. and some of the, the pieces inside of there include um, capturing their, like their tribal language like how they actually talk about themselves, how they actually talk about their problems, how they actually talk about their desires, yeah, where they physically are, where their environment is. And then this, what was the third piece? So cognitive in terms of, you know, perhaps their education or what they're seeking mm -hmm. to be educated about that, you know, what they want to learn about. Gotcha. And so then the, of, okay. the habits. Yeah. Got it. Wow. Those are some gems. If you're on here live or if you're listening to this later on in time, 
We're talking with Shawnee Taylor. She is a professional copywriter and content creator and coach consultant who helps people to t capture the attention of their target clients and convert those people into clients. Um, so if you want to find out how to work with her, you go to facebook.com, you search up Shawnee Taylor, and I'll also be putting a link in the comments or in the show notes. If you're listening to this on a podcast, I'll also go ahead and drop some, drop some questions. If you, if things are coming up for you and you're like, Hmm, that makes a lot of sense. And I have a question about this. Go ahead and drop those in the comments right below this video. And hopefully we can get to it in here. Um, I want to transition a tiny bit. So that is, those are some amazing ways to capture their attention is by using to apply the empathy. So how do you capture attention from people that aren't yet, that don't yet know about you? Like, how would you build, how would you build, how do you build a, how, how do you find these people? Is it just posting on social media? What's your strategy? What's going on? What's, What's happening? What's going on? Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So from a, so I only, um, my personal strategy is I don't pay for advertising um, or anything like that. It's all organic. Um, you know, uh, there's, again, it's about daily habits, right? So for me, again, coming back to that, people want to work with people that they know, like and trust. Um, if you're using social media as your platform, whether it's Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram, you want to be posting daily about um, the problems that you solve for people. So the reason that you want to be posting daily, you might have a really small following right now and you might think, well, what's the point? But first of all, you start today, it's that whole, you know, taking action, you don't just sit on something on top of it. You know, we're not a monk. We're not sitting on top of the mountain, all in meditation and embracing. We're taking action and it starts today. So mm. daily content over time, think of it as though you're putting deposits each day into your bank account. And each day with the daily content, one or two pieces, you're depositing into your bank account. And over time, that starts to build you build compound interest, you build momentum. So as you're building a following, people aren't just looking at the thing that you posted on the day that they joined you. They're scrolling through, they're seeing what else you've posted. I mean, there can be stuff that can go back years and people will find it. So it demonstrates that you're a leader. What's that look? That was, oh my God, they're going back years into my feed. Listen, you would be surprised. Yesterday I had two people who sent me a friend request and all of a sudden I had 26 notifications. I hadn't even accepted them at the time. And they'd gone back through and clicked like on all of these different things, like stalker much. No, I'm, jo <laughs> I'm joking. But no, but it demonstrates they're... that people, they will scroll back, right? So you're depositing yeah. into your bank every day and, and you're building. And that's what you want. I mean, you want to have enough content where people could go through your feed and immediately fall in love with everything that you do. Exactly. Exactly. So I think it's really valuable to um, don't look at what you don't have and think that there's no point. Start acting as though you've already got what you want. And, and that starts with, you know, positioning yourself as an expert and as a leader in your field and the way to the best way mm -hmm. to do that, that you have control over is daily content about challenges that your market faces and giving them solutions to those challenges. Because I think the other thing is that a lot of people tend to be in scarcity mode and they think that they can't give all of their secrets away because then nobody will want to work with them because all of their secrets are on their social media, social media profile. But it's just not the case. And you have to be prepared to give value in order to get value. Mm-hmm. So, so totally. daily content is so important and, um, you know, it, it builds trust, it builds rapport. The next thing I would say is if you can get live video on your feed, if you're confident enough to do that, then, again, you stand out in, an, in a saturated, crowded marketplace and people feel connected to you because they can see you speaking. It's very different to just having written posts. Yeah, yeah. That's so, uh, that's what we're doing right now. We're live. We're, we're on live. the feeds. We're live. It's all real right here. That's it. Yeah. Um, 
that is such great advice. Uh, both pieces of advice that you gave. Number one, just create a daily habit of just creating content that that where you apply empathy every single day. And even if you're starting from zero, you're not actually starting from zero because if you're a human being that has a Facebook account, it means that you're at least 14 years old and <laughs> and you've well, had, you'd think. <laughs> you'd think, right? Well, you have all of those years, all the years and everything that you've ever done in your entire life is so uniquely you. No one else has the power. No one else has the ability to impact people the way that you do. And I'm speaking, I'm speaking to you, Shani, but I'm also speaking to everyone that's listening um, in that just go for it. And because there's no one like you and there's going to be people who totally align and fall in love with you and want to do business with you and want to create a relationship with you, but they can't or it makes it more challenging for them if they don't know who you are and they can't find out about how you're incredible and an incredible contribution to the world. So. And Michael, I love that. And I, and I just want to interject because what you bring up is so, so powerful. And I think it, um, let's just explore that for a minute because I think we all, it's a human condition that we feel like we're imposters or um, we, we hold ourselves back because we think, well, why should I do this thing that I want to do because it's been done before? And so I just want to talk on that for a minute because absolutely everything has already been done. And so I love that you brought up this point because everything has already been done, but it hasn't been done by you. And um Often, so who we are is just simply an expression of evolution of what we've experienced and what we've learned. And so what we do, it's like we collect our experiences and our learnings and then we go out into the world and we powerfully share that from our unique expression and that is our gift to the world. And, I've, again, I've actually got a video on my wall about this because it's something that is so inspiring is realizing that your unique gift to the world is your expression of everything you've learned and experienced. And so just because Tony Robbins did it or Einstein said it, it doesn't mean that you don't have a gift to give in that space as well. So really give yourself permission to share from your unique place. I think it's so, so powerful. Mm. Yeah. And guess what? Shawnee and I both give you permission to do you it. You have permission. You have That's permission. Right. You're allowed. You're allowed to go for it and share your own unique expression of the world and all the knowledge that you have in your brain. Even if you learned it from someone else, they learned it from someone else too. Exactly. And, and they, even if someone has like a super unique idea, it's not it's it's all it's not really a unique idea because it's been influenced by all of the things that they've ever learned and it's it's just like their mind their unique mind connected it in such a way that it felt new it you know and so you have permission you're allowed to permission, you permission. granted permission granted okay so Mm, there's some just some juicy juice in this interview i love it thank you so much <laughs> for being a, what I'm going to call the juicy truths of life <laughs> right here. Um, so we were talking about something or you, you shared something with me when we were talking about having this interview and I want to know what it is. You didn't disclose it to me. And you said it's the entrepreneur's secret weapon. You said, I'm going to share about the entrepreneur secret weapon, what every successful business owner knows. And before you do it, I'm going to give them a chance in the comments. If you know what the entrepreneur secret weapon is, go ahead and drop your answer below. And I'll give you like 10 seconds to do it. I'll count down from 10, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. These are fast seconds. 4, <laughs> 3, 2, one okay those will show up in a minute here i think uh because a little delayed but i would like to know from you shani the t the bringer of truth the secret weapon revealed what is the secret weapon michael it truly cannot be a surprise to you that the secret weapon of any successful business owner 
<laughs> is copywriting. And I know that that's a Ooh. bomb, the truth bomb. And I know that that's a little bit of a play on words, but I think that through our conversation today that you can see why it truly is your secret weapon. You can't grow your business unless you know how to connect with your audience because the only way your business is going to grow is when you've got an ever greater number of people to serve. And if we go backwards, if we reverse engineer now, the way to have a greater number, people, greater number of people to serve is to be able to connect with them. How do we connect with them? We connect with them through empathy. How do we create empathy? Well, if we're not naturally a feeling person, I've given some, some tips and tools here on how to create it through a science around keywords, empathy mapping. And then we come back around to building our business and having an ever greater number of people to serve. Mm, that's so good. I want to acknowledge May. Yes, work hey, at May. It, work, at, work at it every day. That wasn't what Shani said, but that was an excellent. That's definitely, I feel like that's also a secret. There are probably many secret weapons. So I'll, if, if, I, if I was giving out points, you get 100 points. For work well, actually, every day. Let's, let's, let's hook into that because May makes a really great point. Um, because again, what I see with so many new entrepreneurs or new business owners is actually, and I, and look, I'm a millennial. Um, I know it doesn't look like it, but I actually am. So I, I really want to share this and I speak from a place of love, but I think we all know that us millennials have, generally have this expectation that we're just going to get everything handed to us, Right. And so I, a lot, generally, not all of us, just as a general sort of group, right? And so what, what? I see a lot in terms of like the groups that, I, that I'm that i in on, on Facebook is people saying, you know, well, I did these two things today and I still don't have my outcome. And it's like, so May makes a great point. You have to get up. You have to show up for yourself every single day. It's not a tick and flick. It is hard work. You're going to experience challenges, you know, working, trying to grow a business and doubting yourself. You have to show up every day regardless of what's going on. So May makes it a really great point. Mm, yes. I 100% agree. There's definitely no, no two ways about it. You know, the secret weapon of copywriting, it's that compounded, right? Because it's every communication that you make with someone. It's every conversation that you have. It's every post that you make. Absolutely. It's every video that you make over time. Absolutely. And so, so May, you know what? I changed my, my answer. Not 100 points. You get 1 million points <laughs> because that's exactly what Shawnee was saying. You're so on the nose. Um, yeah. May knows I, what's up. May's deep. May knows, May knows what's up. Yeah. Um, if you are on here, we are talking with Shawnee Taylor, professional. I'm going to say copywriter, but I just want to say amazing person, professional, amazing person helps people to connect with their ideal client and convert them into to people who they can serve. Um, and if you want to connect with her, you go to facebook.com. You can look up Shawnee Taylor and connect with her. And I'll put the comment, I'll comment her link below as well as uh, it'll be in the show notes somewhere. So I know you, we only have a, about 10 minutes left. And I want to actually be done like pretty much right at that point. So I want to ask you a few questions here that I've been asking all my guests. Number one, is there anything? thing that you wish that we had talked about but we haven't talked about yet or is there anything that you wanted to share that you haven't shared yet um you know what absolutely nothing comes to mind because um you know i had a, a list of things that i you know really valued that i wanted to get across for the listeners today to help them implement some really um, useful tools that they can that they can use to create their copy which was around the empathy mapping and, you know, and then you've thrown in some great stuff about, you know, um, you know, May's thrown in some great stuff. So actually, I really love where this has gone. It's just so synchronous. Oh, I love that. Well, thanks so much. So a couple more, just a few more questions and then we'll be, we'll be good to go. My question to you is what in your life brings you the most joy? 
Um, while I am an introvert, what brings me the most joy is like really deep and authentic connection. Um, but I have to add that within doses. So it's not something that I, you know, I, I can't. But when I say connection, it's not necessarily about connecting with people on a physical level. And I think that's why I love um, writing as much as I do, because it's my avenue to be able to connect with people. I mean, words are so, so powerful. Um, you know, it actually, like it, 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 there's tears of, of gratitude there when I think about the power of words and um, you know communication is many things I get that it's not just words but when we share our words with people from our heart whether that's in writing or verbally it changes people it changes the way that they think it changes the way that they feel and that ultimately changes their life and copy to me is so important um, because when I serve my clients in being able to write something that connects them with their audience, it's that whole butterfly effect. I get to serve thousands of people through serving one person at one time because of their, their market, their network. So when I'm able to help my clients connect with their market and then their market comes to them and purchases their service or their product, that purchase or, or product, that service or product changes that person's life in some way. And then when that person is changed, they have their social network. When we're changed, it comes through in, the, in our social network. And so we start to see that butterfly effect. So for me, words are so, so powerful. Mm. Yeah, I totally, I received that. Thank you so much for sharing that. Oh, so good. So good. Okay. That's incredible. I agree. 100% again and 110% <laughs> I agree. Um, I have one more question and you kind of answered it a little bit. It's a, along the same veins, but what is something that you are grateful for today? Something that I'm grateful for today. Wow. So normally I do my gratitudes at the end of every day. So I start my day with my affirmations and I finish my day with my gratitudes. So mm -hmm. you've caught me a little bit off guard there. Oh, my but, goodness. But what comes up for me is I'm actually, and this is along, you know, what May brought up about working at, at it every day and, and we, you know, led into that conversation about how you have to show up. So I'd actually really like to take a minute to be grateful to myself for showing up every day for myself and yeah <laughs> and I think that the reason I share that is because I think it's powerful for anyone who wants to take a minute to be grateful to themselves for showing up for them every single day unless we get up and show up for us nobody else is going to nobody's going to get up every single day and dedicate their entire life to our happiness and so we have to do it for us and it's extra hard on those days where we're not well slept or you know we're feeling crappy about what what we're doing and we're we're doubting ourselves so yeah i'm i'm grateful to me for getting up every day and persevering mm. i'm grateful for you being grateful for yourself <laughs> that's incredible and an amazing reminder that it is super important to give yourself that gratitude so this we're going to call it this is pretty much the end of the interview here and i so appreciate you being here and just bringing yourself and i'm grateful that you're here uh and i think that some of the things that you shared today really impactful and super actionable like you were saying it's like things that you can actually do and i just want to speak to the audience here if you guys want to connect with shawnee learn more about how she does what she does and how she serves people and if you might want to be served by her uh, you can connect with her on facebook facebook.com and then you search up shawnee taylor or you can click one of the links below i'll link it down there and 
you, I just want to remind all of you that you have the power to bring joy, to bring gratitude, to bring so much contribution into the world. It's wild and no one can do it just like you can. So go out there today. If you're listening to this on the replay, on the live, whenever you're listening to this, just remember to be grateful for yourself, take action every day, empathize with your target audience and go out there and be the greatest contribution to the world that you can be. Oh, that's beautiful. Gave me goosebumps. Awesome. So I'm going to, I'm going to stop it here. 